Hi, welcome to the introduction video to Vortrix Algebra. The prerequisites for this course are high school algebra, geometry, and trigonometry. Vortrix Algebra supersedes Q vectors, which was the earlier attempt at providing a rational multiply and divide in vectors. So Vortrix Algebra is a new vector algebra that supersedes all other algebraic systems, vector or otherwise. The advantage is it provides invertible forms of vector multiply and divide, which supersedes the Q algebra versions. It provides for a full vector calculus to supplement the classical vector calculus, which is based on partial derivatives, or partial calculus, as it were. It resolves the ambiguities of classical vector algebras with giving proper cross product definitions, provides the first ever vector sine, cosine, tangent, etc. It provides a proper relationship between vectors and matrices, and much, much more. We'll cover a little bit of detail on this in the body of this video. And it resolves most of the anomalies of classical arithmetic. For example, it provides a meaningful definition to the square root of negative 1. Where if engineers and scientists are probably going, well, yeah, everyone knows in science and engineering that square root of negative one has always been undefined, undefined. And yet we have this thing called complex mathematics, even quaternions, that make heavy use of this undefined phenomenon. Isn't that odd and ironic? And that's in keeping with one of the rules of acquisition, which is monkey do does not mean monkey no. Just because we can put something to great use does not mean we truly understand it. I mean, considering that we use fire for 20,000 years all the while thinking it's an element. It was only in the past couple of hundred years that we figured out that fire was a chemical reaction. So see, just because we can put something to great use does not mean we actually understand what the hell it is. Now, we're going to finally understand what the square root of negative 1 is, and that is going to propel us into the next age of science and engineering. I hope. I think it will. But knowing how people react to my stuff before, they're going to go, ah, 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 we knew it all along, blah, 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 you know, that crap. As Arthur C. Clarke says, there's three, three, three echelons to science. First is, you're an idiot. Second is, well, okay, maybe. And the third echelon is, well, we knew it all the time. So, now as a prerequisite, if you need a primer or refresher on vectors, please see the first videos of QAlgebra. There's a, on the YouTube site, there's a playlist. Look under playlists, and there's a playlist for Q vectors or QAlgebra under, and just start that playlist from the beginning. It'll give you a primer on what vectors are, what matrices are, all that stuff. And you'll start getting into Q algebra. Most of the stuff about Q algebra, most of it there, probably about 75% of this topic discussion of Q algebra, is going to be the same for Vortrix algebra. So it's, it's all a good primer. So give me a, a simple Vortrix overview. Uh, vortex vectors are more robust than classical vectors, even Q vectors. And then the multiplication of the vortex vectors produces a vortex, vortex matrix. And that's where the word vortex comes from, its contraction of vortex matrix. And this shows you two vortex, vortex vectors being multiplied to give you what I call the AB matrix. It's the same term we use from Q algebra. So Vortrix algebra makes the following obsolete. It makes any mathematical system where the product of two things results in the same thing. Like in classical vectors, the cross product of two vectors is a vector. Well, that's completely wrong. In complex mathematics, the product of two complex numbers is a complex number. That cannot possibly be. See, here's what you can do, here's a way you can resolve it. If I have two lines and I multiply two lines of, let's say, 10 feet by 10 feet, by multiplying those, I get an area of 100 square feet. I don't get another line. So the multiplication of two things cannot be. So if I multiply a line by a line, I can't get a line. It's got to be something different. And so any system where the product of two things results in the same form and same units is ridiculous. It is both dimensionally and Form in, the, in terms of form, it's invalid. 
an example of that is a cross product that results in a normal vector. Okay, that's a transgression as, uh, that's in the same keeping with what I just showed above. Uh, vortex algebra also makes any mathematical system or tool that treats vectors as just a row or column matrix. That is now obsolete. For in vortex algebra, the interoperability between vectors and matrices is rigorously defined, and vortex matrices and vectors do not occupy the same space. Therefore, you cannot casually consider a vector as a row or column matrix. That's completely a violation of both form and units. And vortex algebra also makes complex number theory to include quaternions obsolete. There's no need now to define your physics in terms of real and imaginary. With vortex algebra, you can now define everything in terms of real units, volts, amps, uh, dimensions, uh, power, things like that. No more of this imaginary space ridiculousness. That's gone. Absolute. Gotta. Nada. Again, I want to shout out to my Patreon subscribers for being patient. I've kind of been absent from the scene developing this because this is a lot of work. A lot of checking and rechecking and crossing my I's and dotting my T's or I think I got that backwards. Because when I produce this, I don't want there to be any mistakes. Because out in the world today, if somebody produces just one mistake, people go, ah, you're a crack, you're, you're a quack, uh, I'm not going to listen to you. So I cannot have any mistakes, anything. So I have to go over it again and again and again. So I appreciate the steadfast support of my Patreon members. Many of them who told me, just make it right. Don't, you know, just spend your time and get it right. I appreciate that. Thank you. No more voodoo physics or imaginary mathematics. Oh, and the release date of Vortex Algebra is going to be in the next few weeks. Uh, I've got to get the paper copyrighted, and then I'm going to start a mailing. And I think what we're going to do is release it to the Vortex... Uh, release it to the Patreon members for, after it's been copyrighted, release it to the Patreon patriarchy for two months before we make it public, just to give them first crack at it and the possibility they might see a mistake that we can fix okay, before we make it public. So that's uh, how it's going to be rolled out. And again, we're looking at a timeline between one and two more weeks to go from this point forward before we get the copyright. Thank you.